Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this color key glitch animation effect on an object in your video that I've seen on a lot of trendy music videos lately, and we're going to do it from scratch in Adobe Premiere Pro. So if you guys are enjoying these videos, then make sure to leave a like on it below. Go follow me on Instagram at Justin Odisho if you want to reach out to me, and subscribe to the channel here on YouTube so you don't miss any of my new videos. So I've got this example clip on the timeline, and in order to get the glitch playing on just one object of the photo, we're going to do some paint bucket and color keying. So in the effects panel on the right hand side, let's search for one called paint bucket and click and drag that on your clip. Now this is going to create a color fill based on a certain point in your object. So the fill point you can see it starts off near the middle, but what this is basically is imagine an imaginary paint bucket tool, you know the same type of paint bucket you might find in MS Paint or Photoshop. And if we move it to the left with the X position, you see the thing that is getting painted in is over to the left now. If we move it to the right, you see it goes through that plastic bag. It fills in these spots on the branch. Basically, this is an X and Y position point for you to tell Premiere what point is going to be your fill point or the point that it's clicking on. So I'm going to make my fill point the plastic bag because that's what I want to mask out and it creates a color key for us that follows this plastic bag. So fine tune the point and do keep in mind that this is a static shot, but if your shot did have some camera motion in it, you could animate the fill point with keyframes so you could somewhat track a point in your clip. And I'm gonna keep the fill selector at color and alpha. Now the next thing we can adjust is the tolerance. So the lower the tolerance, the more specific that fill point is gonna be and the higher the tolerance, the more forgiving it's gonna be. So higher it, just into the point where you've smoothly selected your entire object, but no more. So, or I mean, however you wanna do it, this is kind of an abstract effect. But for me, I want a somewhat clean selection on the plastic bag. If you ever wanna see what's going on, you can click view threshold, and it shows you the black and white of what's going on in your clip. So next up in the effects control panel, we have the stroke type, which is how you want your fill to be. So feather, spread, choke, stroke. So you have different options, like this is just an outline, and this could go a lot of different abstract ways, but I'm gonna keep it at one of these solid options, so something like feather will work for me. And you can feather the softness of it to smooth out your edges a little bit if you want to. So instead of being quite choppy at zero, you could add a little bit of smoothness to even it out. Next, you have the option to invert your fill. So if you want to do the opposite or the background, that could come in handy. And you can also see how this paint bucket tool is a really useful tool for color keying and masking all within Premiere Pro when you don't want to do any rotoscoping or you didn't actually shoot on a green screen, etc. Next up, we have the option to choose the fill color, which I'm gonna leave at a bright red, which is pretty distinct to anything in the clip, but this is gonna be the color that we're keying out later. And then you also have the opacity, which could somewhat serve as the strength in this case, but I'm gonna leave that at 100%. Also, you have the blending mode, which if you're working with the paint bucket tool in other scenarios, this might be useful. You could make it only do the fill, or you could use this to actually cut out the stencil. And this is where you could play around with using the paint bucket tool to be more like a masking and cutting out objects tool. But I'm gonna leave it at normal because we're instead gonna use this as a color key for us to fill in different glitch patterns and textures with. So once I have my clip keyed out, I'm going to go to File, New, and create a new bars and tone media. This is just gonna create a calibration media in the project media bin. And what these are used for is just to calibrate monitors. But we're gonna use this assortment of colors instead to create some glitchiness. So I'm gonna delete the tone or the audio that comes with that because I don't want it. And then I'm gonna go to my effects panel and I'm gonna search for one called Wave Warp. You should find it in the Distort Video Effects folder. Now I'll click and drag that on the bars and tone. And this is gonna help us create some random glitchy animation. So I'm gonna change the wave type to noise, and I'm gonna increase the wave height and the wave width until we kinda of just splice and destroy things up a bit. You can turn the pinning onto all edges if you want things to get filled out a bit more, and just kind of play around with the direction, the wave width, and even the wave type to your liking. Here you can actually use the keyframe animations if you want to add a little bit of variability. So I can start at one direction, not like the band, and keyframe it over to have a little bit of rotation as things develop. You can also increase the phase as you go on, so zero 
all the way over to a couple rotations. So what we're going to do next is organize these together so we fill in the object that we want it to. So I'm going to actually drag my original clip on top to track 3. I'm also seeing that the fill point kind of gets messed up throughout so I am going to keyframe it like I told you guys since there was a little bit of camera motion. So I'll add a fill point keyframe by clicking the stopwatch icon and I'm going to move until the bag moves a little bit left off center so I'm going to make sure the fill point follows that and we'll go to the end of the clip and just make sure the fill point stays on that bag the whole time. And I'm also going to take this same clip and I'm going to duplicate it underneath. So we've kind of sandwiched the glitch bars and tone in our layer panel. Now on this underneath clip, I'm going to just delete the paint bucket and everything we had. We've basically got the original clip on the bottom. So you could start that way if you wanted. Then on the second layer, we have the glitches, which I'm going to put on the blending mode of color dodge just to get rid of all that gray and have a nice bright little effect. You could play around with different blending modes. You can keep it on normal or overlay, whatever you want to experiment with. And you can also experiment with different opacities as well. Then we have our third layer, which is the color keyed layer, which we're going to now add a final effect onto of the color key. We're basically going to tell Premiere Pro to take out whatever is red or whatever color in this. So I'll drag the color key effect onto this clip. I'll go down to the effects control panel. I'll choose the key color to be the exact same red so I can even use my ink dropper tool here or just pick that bright red. Press OK. And what we've basically done is created a cutout which you see is showing up black here for everything underneath to show through. So now when I press play we created this cutout illusion of the glitch animation showing up on just that object which is the paper bag. So there's tons of different ways that you can go with this and the paint bucket tool in general is a very cool useful way to do keying and masking within Premiere Pro when your clip allows it. But this is just one abstract take on it that I've seen in a lot of trendy music videos. If you guys enjoyed this effect, make sure you leave a like on it below. Let me know what you thought in the comments and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my new videos. Go follow me on Instagram at Justin Odisho if you guys want to reach out to me. And once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.